Welcome to Superhero Pow. I'm your host nerd, Tom Frumgen. Today, let's talk about Captain Marvel. Yes, I know the powers that be and all the lawyers want you to call him Shazam, but his frickin' name is Captain Marvel. Suck it, Marvel Comics. Now, while I'm not a huge fan of the Captain, I do enjoy his adventures from time to time. Heck, I've even seen the Republic Pictures serial from 1941. Thank you, YouTube. But one thing I've found interesting about the character, especially in recent times, apart from his name, is... Okay, I'm sorry, but while we're on the topic of his name, did you hear how DC writer Jeff Johns has said that the reason why Shazam saying Shazam doesn't turn him back into Billy Batson is because of the exclamation point? Yeah, get this. You see, in Jeff's mind, it's a spell. S-H-A-Z-A-M exclamation point. So saying Shazam doesn't do anything, but saying Shazam is what turns Billy into Shazam and back again. How's that for overthinking? Also, to my knowledge, Mary Marvel and Captain Marvel Jr., not to mention the other three new Shazam-powered heroes, don't even have names yet. To which I say, hey, DC, if the solution is messier than the problem, then just stop. Please, stop it. Anyway, what I wanted to talk about was the iconic lightning bolt. You see, for decades, it was just special effects. But nowadays, it's actual lightning, as seen in the movie, as it blows a hole in the ceiling whenever Billy uses it inside. So when did all this start? Because as I said, it wasn't in the beginning. In the beginning of Wiz Comics, not that kind of Wiz, the lightning bolt and the accompanying smoke cloud was just used as a smoke screen. Coupled with some suspension of disbelief from the reader, Billy could turn into Captain Marvel right in front of somebody. And to them, it was like somebody threw a smoke bomb, and in the smoke, Billy ran away, and this dude Captain Marvel just showed up in front of them. Even when DC updated Captain Marvel in 1987 with Shazam! The New Beginnings by Roy and Danny Thomas, the lightning bolt was still just special effects. Now, I should point out that the biggest change to Captain Marvel at this time was that young Billy Batson was now Captain Marvel a kid in an adult's body, so much so that Guy Gardner in the Justice League famously called him Captain Whitebread. Ah, the pain of being a goody-good. But before then, Captain Marvel kind of had his own persona. He was still Billy, but he was more mature and could actually use the wisdom of Solomon, which has been thrown out the window these days for a kid in an adult's body fun. But getting back to the lightning bolt, the next reboot is when the lightning became real. In 1994's The Power of Shazam by Jerry Ordway. In this retelling, Captain Marvel accidentally says Shazam while in flight. Again, not using the wisdom of Solomon. While riding on a Zeppelin, the frantic Billy Batson says it again and lights the Zeppelin on fire. The first time the magic lightning bolt has ever had a real-world effect. In the following series, Ordway never really highlights this again, except in issue number four, when Mary Marvel sets a curtain on fire. Then, of course, famously in the miniseries Kingdom Come by Mark Wade and Alex Ross from 1996, Captain Marvel uses the lightning bolt as an offensive weapon for the first time in his fight with Superman. This was repeated in the 2006 television series Justice League Unlimited's episode, Clash which was written by the late Dwayne McDuffie, directed by Dan Reba, and of course produced by Bruce Timm. Personally, I'd like to see the lightning bolt go back to just being special effects. It makes for a good humorous scene, and quite honestly, having a lightning bolt that actually blows things apart is just messy from a storytelling standpoint. If you noticed in the movie, Billy is usually outside when he changes, because just how many holes do you want in the ceiling of his school? On a side note, what kind of school is this? You telling me Mary, on her way to college, goes to the same school as little Darla? Really? Anyway, that's it for me. Thanks so much for watching. And I'd love to hear your comments on the topic. And I'm currently working on another little factoid that you can annoy your friends with at the next D&D party. So be sure to subscribe and not miss it. I mean, what else are you going to talk about? How listening to a door before you open it is just implied so you don't have to keep saying it over and over again? 